are you in the market for an SUV coupe? If yes, you are at the right place. If you're not, well, you're still at the right place because you've got to see this. This is the Citroen Basalt. It is based on the C3 Aircross SUV, which is based on the C-Cube platform, which is a made for India platform from the Stellantis group. So let us quickly see what is in here for us. So let's see the design of the car first. This is a fresh new take on the C3 Aircross design. We have the Chevron twin logo along with the grille slits. There's a wide and large air intake. New projector kind LED headlamps plus DRLs on top, which has also been carried over to the C3 Aircross SUV. It looks chunky, it looks muscular, especially when you come to the side. You can see the sloping roof and they've tried to break up the monotony with the help of these plastic claddings with the highlights. 16 inch wheels on this car, even with the top variant. They are 17 inches on the C3 Aircross SUV. Disc brakes at front, drum brakes at the rear. The wheelbase is lesser than a C3 Aircross, but the overall length is actually more than a C3 Aircross. In fact, it is more than a Creta as well. Let us come at the rear, as you can see, with the basalt nameplate, the twin Chevron logo and the Citroen logo as well, as well as PureTech, which is what one of the engines is on this. A very large boot is a big hatch, 470 liter boot. Now let's see inside. Now there are two interior options on the basalt. This is the dual tone one. There is also one with a different monotone one, which has not been shown to us so far. It is very similar with the new C3 Aircross SUV. So you get a nice chunky wheel, slightly flat bottomed, as you can see here. The Citroen logo on the steering wheel. There is a new uh, touchscreen, which is also slightly modified than the previous version that we have seen on the C3 Aircross SUV. And there is an instrument cluster, which is a brand new TFT color display. Again, it's digital. There is nothing analog about it. If you come to the center console, it gets these automatic climate control button switches. There is a USB port. This one is only an accessory, which has a Type-C as well as USB port. There's a tray here followed by a wireless charging pad that it also gets wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay along with the system. Two engine options. One is a naturally aspirated three-cylinder 1.2-liter engine and the other is a turbo petrol. With the naturally aspirated, you only get a five-speed manual. With the turbo petrol, you get a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic gearbox. It comes with manual controls as well. So there is manual override. Right at the center, door pockets, two cup holders right here in the middle. Glove box. Seats, as you can see, it uses four leather as well as a fabric finish. There is a center armrest as well with storage space. On the roof, you get the lights. There is nothing fancy stuff. No sunroof and a manually adjustable rear view mirror. On the steering wheel, you have buttons for operating the menu, the multimedia, as well as Bluetooth telephone. There are two stocks on the steering column. On the left side, we have for the wipers. On the right is for the indicator and headlamps. There are no auto wipers or automatic headlamps on this and no rear wiper, unlike the C3 Aircross SUV, because this is a SUV coupe. From a driver convenience point of view, there is a dead pedal because this is an automatic and steering wheel can be adjusted for height, but not for reach. Front seats have manual controls for both the backrest angle. Height adjustment only on the driver's side. Unlike the C3 Aircross SUV, only two row of seats in the SUV Coupe. Three seats at the rear. It comes with a center armrest, two cup holders, three point seat belts for all, but these come without weight sensors. Another unique thing, is this adjustable. It has a three-step angle. AC vents at the center with two USB ports. You can control it to switch it off and on, but there are no controls for the fan. And uh, in terms of legroom, we get around 980 millimeters of legroom. I'm around five feet eight, and you can see the amount of headroom that is there at the rear. That was a quick synopsis of what the Citroen Basalt has in store for us. Watch out for the review that will go live on the Car and Bike YouTube channel as well as the website on August 9th, 
where we will also mention what will be its starting price. But what do you think should be the starting price of this car? Let us know in the comments.